We're talking about David Martinez taking on Xavier Franklin. And I wanted to shout out, we had somebody in our chat earlier today say he grew up with Xavier Franklin. Uh, Xavier Moneyline is the play. Shout out to JJA1 um, in the chat representing for his guy. We always love to see that. And uh, if you guys have people that you know and love on the card that you're rooting for, go ahead and hit us in the chat with that. But we've got David Martinez, 10-1, and one, taking on 5-0 and oh, Xavier Franklin. That's a, a pretty cool, you know, distinction for a guy with just a 5-0 and record to already be getting the call up to Dana White Contender Series. I do think that shows, um, you know, some faith in him, some uh, belief in him from the matchmakers, but also it's a tough ask, right? You got to go out there and take on a guy with double the professional experience, a guy who's fought pretty quality opponents in combate at times. Axel Ozuna, an example of that. Uh, he's fought experienced opponents as well. However, the Gianni Vasquez uh, loss, doesn't age very well, right? Uh, kind of a, a middling regional level fighter. So I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. First, we'll kick it to our brother Pierce on this one to mix things up. How do you feel about this matchup, my man? Yeah, I'm agree with our boy in the chat, bro. Z Xavier Franklin money line. We're going to take that shit to the bank, bro. It's going to be highway robbery. So when I looked at this matchup, you know, there was a lot of talk around the town about how this David Martinez guy is the next man up from Mexico, how he's hyped up prospect from Kimbate and that he's going to make a wave in the UFC. And then I watch his tape and it's like, yeah, I mean, he's got a cool highlight reel. He's got good. Uh, a lot of his KOs come from that big right hand. He's got great counters. And that's one thing I'll give him. But um, one thing I didn't like about him is like before he finds these KOs, it's like he's a bit underwhelming at range. I feel like he doesn't fill the space too well. He's um. I feel like some he can be outworked, if that makes sense. Well, I think he has good counters. I think a guy in Xavier Franklin is going to be pushing the pace on him, man. I I was going in here thinking that this uh, Martinez guy was being set up to win, but then when you watch the Franklin tape, man, this kid's good, man. He's like a he's like the little engine that could, man. He's just forward pressured, work the body, and then he and then he uh, brings the shots up top. And I really like um, his forward pressure and speed in this matchup, man. I know Martinez is kind of someone who uh, will, will lie on the lateral movement and move side to side and just kind of pick his counters. But, um, I mean, I feel like the way to beat him is you just got to stay in Martinez's face and you really got to push the pace on him. And I feel like someone in Xavier, or Xavier, uh, Xavier Franklin, who's been in five round fights before he's been into the championship rounds and he just continues to march forward. He's got good wrestling as well. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him to maybe look for some takedowns here. I know in the Axel Asuna fight, we saw Axel get Mount in the third or fourth round and, I mean, Xavier's the type of guy where it's like he has good counter wrestling as well. So I know maybe if the pressure's not working off, you can maybe sprawl on a takedown and look to take the back there. But I overall, I just like this kid's pace, man. I like how he sets up his shots. He's going to work the body. And I really think he's going to um, – he could break um, David down the stretch, man. I don't know. I, I feel like this line's worst case pick him. Honestly, I was maybe given Xavier Franklin like 55% here. I just think his style is a lot more effective in this matchup where I know I'm going to be having the guy that's pushing the pace that's going forward, whereas David is probably going to rely on that counter. And if it doesn't come, man, he could be getting outworked down the stretch. So I, it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to for me to gauge like how much someone should bet at the current line. But I did play Franklin pretty large at um, plus 200 on Sunday. So I, I don't know. I think you could maybe give a minus 130 here. And if I'm looking at props to attack on this fight that I think are kind of off, I saw his um, decision line is like plus 350 on bet online. I didn't play it, but since I have so much on his money line, but if you're looking for an angle on him, I don't mind that at all. I think both guys are durable. I think normally in these Bantamweight fights, they tend to go the distance. And I, I think plus 325 decisions good, but you can also plus 140 on the money line. I think that's solid as well. Probably my favorite dog on the whole card. I love it. Bold take from Pierce coming in hot, got the analysis, got the breakdown, got the bet. Absolutely sensational. Gordo, what are you thinking about this matchup, my man? Do you agree? Do you disagree? We always say there's more than one way to skin a cat, bunch of different sharp ways to attack a fight. How do you feel about this one, my brother? Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you have the conviction that uh, someone like Pierce does in the spot to go for, uh, this is one that I, I don't have the mo utmost confidence in. And, and I'll skip right to the, the pick here. Is if gun to my head, if I had to choose a way this fight was going to go down, I, I, I do favor the David Martinez side slightly towards winning those optics here. I, I completely agree. Zero Frank Franklin's going to be the guy going forward. I think if there is wrestling exchanges, he will be the guy to go out there and potentially come on top. But I, I think in the, the, the style they both have, I, I do think David Martinez is the more battle-tested, proven striker here. I think I like his lateral footwork ability 
ability to to uh, move side to side, to to get in and out of the exchanges. And, and although he may not have that same pure pop or aggression and maybe exciting style that Zebra Franklin does, I do think in a 15-minute kickboxing affair, to which I believe this fight to be, that Martinez has more experience at that as someone who can manage their range, someone who can build to create his counters, and, and someone who can keep Xavier Franklin at bay. Now, I do not say that with that most conviction. Like I mentioned, not one where I want to play him at minus 195, but I, I do think in a spot here he is someone who I do think I, I like his experience and like his ability to succeed in the way I see this fight coming out. Now, yes, that plus money is a great line uh, that Pierce got there. I'll power it to him. And again, if you have the conviction he does, uh, I'll power it to him. But I don't have to say that like three times, but truly do not have much more to add on this spot here. I, I, I do think when it comes down to it, the diverse weapons that Martinez has is enough to keep him at bay and utilize the footwork to, to stay off the cage, to stay off the ground and keep this a kickboxing affair where I think he has some success. Um, but man, a, a very tough to fight to call. I, I think both these guys could have some potential success in the UFC. And I'm excited to see who goes out there and, and gets this one done. If the line continued to close, I don't think the experience of Martinez should make him an underdog outright. So might have to get to him there. But aside from that, I do not have much action on this one. Okay. So what I'll say off the rip is I want to do a little bit more tape before I finalize my thoughts on this one. But right now, my inclination is with our brother Pierce. Um, you know, when you look at Xavier Franklin, here's what I like about him. Number one, deceptive record, 5-0. and oh. You look at his amateur results. He's got a bunch of amateur results. A lot of them are stoppages, guys. He's a dangerous striker. He's got power in his hands. Pierce mentioned it. He's not afraid of people. He walks them down. He comes forward. He's willing to take one to give one, but he normally is delivering back harder shots. He's normally the one slipping offline to land a couple back. And the thing that I will note, is I, I think there is a path for Martinez in this fight. Um, that's why I want to do a little more investigation, a little more research. Um, this guy, Martinez, has excellent low kicks, in my opinion. That's the one thing I don't know that was touched on enough. His calf kicks are pretty good, um, and typically that's how he's kind of um, – keeping guys at bay, right? He's moving in and out. He's using a little bit of lateral footwork. He's actually comfortable fighting on the back foot, which a lot of guys are not. So if you're going to pressure, the things that I want to see are, are you effective at pressuring or are you following people around? And I do think that uh, Xavier has good pressure, right? He doesn't just allow people to exit and then he chases them down and, you know, he's running laps after people. He's cutting them off with angled footwork. However, you know, there's going to be some exchanges where he gets hit with hard calf kicks, especially in the first round, in my opinion. So for me, I want to see if I can find some more tape of his reactions. Um, I have seen him get calf kicked. That's why I think it's a, a point of consideration. But in terms of what I liked about his game and why I think he could be effective. Uh, oh, please, Pierce, go ahead. I will say this is I don't know if you picked up on this. I, I was going to mention the calf kick narrative, but it seems like a lot of Martinez's kicks go to the thighs. He doesn't really go for the low calf kick. So that's just a little tidbit I thought I had. Oh, interesting note. I will definitely go back and watch that more. He in uh, one fight that I watched, I'm trying to think uh, it might have been the Ozuna fight. He definitely threw a couple of calf kicks, but it, it might have been a uh, anomalous performance in that in that regard. So um, I'll watch more tape. But the thing I was going to note about uh, Xavier Franklin, uh, Xavier Franklin, excuse me, is the guy I think can be a really sneaky submission threat. Um, something I, I pride myself on is trying to read these guys who have submission ability, but it's not super baked into lines uh, because, you know, they prioritize other things. He's a pressure forward striker, right? But what you've seen from him in the past is uh, there was one fight that he had on his record, and I'm happy to share this on the screen right now, against Corey Sutcliffe. And guys, believe me when I say he could have TKO'd Corey Sutcliffe, but he said, I wanted to make a point of it. I'm better at mixed martial arts. I can go out there and submit these guys. I can knock them out. I can do whatever I want. And when you watch the fight, he does damage. He crumples guys. He's like looking for the takedown, getting a hold of him. And the way that he took the back, I really think uh, was pretty special. Um, now, is it like, you know, world-class jujitsu or something like that? Not necessarily, but he's just fast, athletic. He knows what he wants. And when he uh, initiated the back take, it's quickly going for hips down, hooks in, looking for the rear naked choke. And I think that that's an opportunity, right? I think you've seen uh, Martinez fight out of some bad spots in the grappling, but on the combate regional scene, that's a little bit different, right? We've seen some of those guys come into the UFC and get submitted, um, not have the grappling chops to, to hang. So I do think it's an open question on the Martinez side. I thought uh, Pierce mentioned it. He had some, uh, you know, 
sketchy moments against Ozuna. He rallied. He did a great job. A lot of his finishes don't materialize, though, until round three, rounds four. Um, you know, he's an attritional guy. He's trying to break people down over time. And I do think uh, Xavier is going to come out and start very hot. Um, talk, taking your top knot says Xavier is a purple belt. Um, well, I will say, I think for a purple belt, he, he has very good MMA jujitsu from what I saw. And it, what I mean by that is mostly instincts. A lot of guys don't have the right instincts to finish people when they're hurt. And one of the easiest ways to do it, you get somebody hurt with strikes and then you take their back quickly and you choke them out and you do it while they're not uh, thinking clearly, right? You get somebody foggy in the brain. They're not making great decisions. You choke them. And then it, when they come clear, it's already too late, you know, fist behind the head, chill out, tuck your chin and it's all over. Right. Um, and I think that this guy, Xavier can absolutely put him to sleep, you know, just put a choke on at some point in this contest and close the show. Um, so for me, I think that he's probably the side at plus money. Uh, I think that he's got multiple paths to victory. I can see him winning by all methods. So for me, that's why I would be looking at it just because it's so much plus money, right? Nine to one. Um, I'm sure domestics will open at 12, 15, um, something, you know, very high. And I, I think that that's off. I think he has the opportunity if he, if he decides to take it right on contender series, sometimes these guys go, I'm swinging to the death, right? They will not grapple. Um, but I feel when you go for the path of least resistance, when you try and win the fight, if you're pressuring, one of the things you have to do in order to you know, effectively pressure is initiate takedowns, whether you really commit to them or not, just to stop guys from, uh, you know, skirting around the octagon and disrespecting the pressure, right? How do you hold somebody against the fence? You initiate a takedown attempt and then you just say, Hey, chill out, hold you here, make you spend a little energy to pummel. Those are the kind of things I think you need to do to somebody who's going to be an explosive striker at distance. And I think put them against the fence, go ahead and hit, uh, you know, a, uh, what's it called? Knee to the thigh. Um, and I think that that would be a great way to slow this guy down in round one, try and break him down with pressure and look for the finish in round two with that rear naked choke. So that's kind of the way I see this going. Taz says MMA guru raid. Um, God bless. I don't know what that means, but I appreciate it. Um, all right, guys, uh, anything left to add on this fight or should we move along to the next one, fellas? You know, I think it's um just nice to say that uh they put together a decent fight for uh, Dana White Contender Series. I know these uh high level fights are a rare occurrence nowadays, but um shout out to them for actually doing proper scouting for. This. Yeah, I think this is a great fight, and um I'm excited to do a little more tape on these guys, which I don't always say about some of these Contender Series fighters, right? 